Hello there and welcome back to the channel and with the number 8 in my Cylon Skin Jobs series as you know because you clicked on the title before we get started just like to mention I'm redecorating my house hence why the background has gone a little weird and there's a horrible reflection in the mirror back there and it might be a little echoey because I've started taking everything down in this room because I'm going to be moving my computer so uh, forgive if there's any sound oddities in this video. Before we get started, I just want to mention that this video is brought to you in collaboration with Tappy Cart, who we will talk about later in the video. Before that, like, share, subscribe, comment down below, hit the bell notification icon if you think this video is worth it, and let's get into talking about the number eights, the Sharons, the Boomers. Not the normal Boomers, but the Boomer. Anyway, let's get started. Now, the eights are probably one of the more interesting and diverse model numbers amongst the Cylons. They are built primarily for infiltration, although they also make good medics and doctors. Now, they are seen multiple times working aboard base stars, helping to basically wake up those who have recently downloaded. A whole ship filled with naked eights was seen in one episode. Others were seen generally as infiltrators and other such things. They are very fickle and very prone to changing their minds and having divided loyalties but this helps them integrate more into human society and has made them a good infiltration unit as well as combat model they are generally emotionally a little bit immature and as i said they can flick sides as we see with boomer although initially reluctant to accept her silent heritage she eventually embraces it with gusto others are seen to betray at the drop of a hat kill just to conserve oxygen have affairs to improve their position and their manipulations. They are generally ruthless and, as one of the showrunners put it, more likely to shoot something they don't like. Also, the showrunner of Caprica also once noted that the eights were meant to be modeled, or at least I assume in their headcanon, after Tamara Adama, one of the other AI personas from that show. So, they are a little bit unstable. The two most prominent ones we see, as I said, there are many of them, and I'm not going to go into every individual one that we see and every one of their little bits of activities, but note that there are a lot. They are prolific, just like the sixes. But unlike the sixes and the ones, they have a very diverse range of personalities, and these are typified by Boomer and Athena, who effectively swap sides. Athena falls in love with a human, gets pregnant, has a child. So the Silence believe that love is the missing link. She gets him to love her so that when she has sex with him and her back does that whole weird lighting up thing, that she then becomes pregnant. This is the Cylon goal to create self-proliferation amongst their kind and maybe use humans for something useful as they see it. But what they don't anticipate is the reaction of the Cylon. They are made to mimic humans so convincingly that she too falls in love with him, even going as far as to kill other Cylons to prevent him being killed, even members of her own model number. She is devoted, loyal to Admiral Adama, to her husband, to her child. Boomer, on the other hand, initially was very loyal, but again embraced her silent heritage quite liberally once she realized what she was, although initially she was rejected of it because she was a sleeper agent with implanted memories, but eventually embraced it, although she did make something of a sacrifice of herself towards the end, generally speaking, she became full Cylon again. And again, this fickleness is seen throughout many of the different iterations of the Sharons. Now, just before we go any further into this video, I'll bring your attention to my collaborator. That is Tappy Card. If you have a business, or as I do, a YouTube channel, it is sometimes useful to be able to hand out cards that tell people who and what you are and what you do. Now in my case, I have somewhere in here, I don't like having to use constantly cards. So I got a tappy card. And basically this is what it sounds like is a card that you tap and when you tap it onto a phone, it's compatible with many different mobile phone types, but it comes with a QR code if that doesn't work. You tap it onto the phone and it instantly brings up all the links that are linked to it online on the various websites. It's, in my case, I've got these linked to it currently, although I might add to them and I'm going. 
If you follow the link in the description below, it'll take you to their website, see what you like, see if there's anything like it. They've got quite a few deals on at the moment of the uploading of this video. They are certainly worth checking out and they will save you in the long run from buying new cards to hand out whatever your business is, whether it's YouTube, marketing, sales, whatever. They'll save you fortune plus. There's something a little bit more impressive about them when you want someone to follow you on Instagram, whether you want someone to locate your, as I say, your YouTube channel. It's really easy just to hand them the card, tap it on their phone, and instantly all your links are there. With that said, let's get back to the video on the Sharons. Now, as I said, these were a very fickle mod number. Now, later, they would eventually, the majority of them, would side in the silent civil war with the twos and the sixes against the ones, the fives and the fours in the lobotomization of the raiders and would help to basically reactivate the higher brain functions of the centurions, bringing about the silent civil war. Now, most of the modern number would be wiped out, but it should be noted at the end that their general fickleness, one of them, Boomer specifically, went against her own model number. Now, there was no rule in silent society about who gets to vote for what. Now, generally, when silence vote, they vote as one number, but there was no rule to say that individual silence couldn't cast a singular vote, and when she cast a vote, she cast it against her other fellow eights. And during the Civil War, she stayed on the side of the ones, the fours, and the fives, being the only eight on the other side of the Civil War. As a result, effectively from her decision, which kind of led to the spiraling events that led to the silent Civil War, She's unique amongst the silence. None of the other model numbers did this. And again, Athena went against the rest of her kind by joining with humanity. That was again going kind of against the grain, showing that this model number has the capacity to think outside the box of Cylon of programming, far more than, say, some of the others were able to do, and making her one of the more interesting and diverse units of the Cylon Empire. Now, Eventually, towards the end, they would settle on the newly discovered Earth, spoilers, with the rest of the twos and the sixes and the rest of humanity, and would live out their days until eventually dying naturally of old age without the ability to resurrect, at least as far as we know. And all of them would eventually go extinct that way, just like all the other model numbers would do eventually, except maybe those centurions that disappeared off somewhere, which I'm going to do a video on soon because I've got a lot of theories on that. It'll be part of this series anyway, once I'm done with the skin jobs. So there we have it. The Sharons. One of the more interesting. Again, they're so prolific throughout the show, I can't possibly go into every individual unit and what they all did, although there was a very interesting webisode if you didn't catch it. If you didn't see the main continuity of the show, webisodes, there were a series of them released, and one of them was all set aboard a Lost Raptor. Now... I don't know if you can still get this out there. I have it on disc because I managed to download it. But basically, this raptor gets lost. And aboard it, there's Felix Gator, two eights, and three humans. I think it was three humans. And basically, there are of the two Sharons, they show again the diversity in their personalities. One is in Cylon pilot garb, and she's really stern and kind of like rah at everybody. And then there's one that's a lot more meek and soft. Now, it turns out that Felix Gator and this meek one have a history. When they were living on New Caprica, she had an affair with him and fell in love with him, even going as far as to save his life from being shot. But during the course of this, she would then kill the other eight to help conserve oxygen or... I don't know, just as revenge. Basically, it was sort of flipping it. You would have thought in this webisode that the kind of aggressive pilot one was the one that was more dangerous to everyone aboard the Raptor, but actually it was the meek one. She kills that one and then proceeds to kill the other three humans with the exception of Felix because she loves him. And she then confesses to him that when she was sleeping with him on New Caprica, she was basically pumping him for more than just... She was pumping him for information, primarily, and she was taking the list of names he gave her and most of them were rounded up by the Cylons and shot simply because they were important enough to be placed on the list. Whether or not they were actually a threat to the Cylons or not was irrelevant. And she made sure that he was spared. His response to this piece of information was, as you can understand, very heartfelt and touching and deeply moved by her sentiments, so much so that he killed her. Because, you know, murderous Cylon. 
So it actually turns out that the, the more abrasive age was the better one. And she was just a vicious, evil sociopath who was hiding behind pretending to be meek and soft and quiet when in reality she was quite evil. Anyway, there we go. There are many other stories about various different apes. You see them on you know, on Caprica, living out their lives. They, they all dress fairly differently. That's a, the main, actually a big thing with this number. More than any of the others. As I said, the, the fives were really bad for basically they all wore a suit. And the only variety they ever did was a bit of a different color scheme. But because the eights were primarily an infiltrator, they had the most diverse dress sense. Met with of them often wearing quite different outfits, pants, skirts, dresses, different color combinations, different types of jewelry, wearing their hair differently, etc. They were very, very varied, more so even than the sixes who were probably the next most varied. So if you liked that video and you made it all the way to the end, thank you for watching. It's very appreciated. Down linked below are my other channels, Nerd World Films, Nerd World History and Nerd World Order. Check, please check them out. Like, share, subscribe over there if you like them. And also all of my social media, which you will find on my Tappy card as well, is also linked down below if you want to check all of that out. Follow, like, whatever on all of that. I do occasionally check them. And with that said, thank you for watching and bye-bye.